Hey everybody, it's Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art, and I am really excited about the fact that I am on vacation, as many of you are. It is Friday before Christmas Eve Sunday, and Christmas on Monday. It's also coming into the new year, and I promised that I would come back and show everybody how I'm making these journal pages, the pads that Heartfelt came out with, and the binder that they all go in. They're beautiful pages of all the different papers that so many of us love from Heartfelt. And you can find both of these along with many other art and craft and scrap and goodies at huckleberryherbs.com, which I'm having an after Christmas sale. I'm going to jump in here and show you what I did to create a planner using these. I'm gonna have to do a voiceover for that because I was um, homesick for a couple of days when I did this and then I'll come back and show you a walkthrough. Huckleberry was quite pleased to just find a little spot to take a nap while I did my work. I placed two of the journals. This is the Words to Live By journal. And in the front, I have the Heartfelt Inspiration journal pages. So two of the books. And Young at Heart and the Heartfelt Love paper pads are the ones I chose to put the papers on the front and inside panels of the book. I wanted to keep it quite flat and smooth on the outside because I knew that the book was going to be tossed around all year long and I really couldn't add dimension. I needed it to be able to slip in and out of bags and be slid across tables and have things piled on it. So I need to keep the outside very smooth. So I cut the papers to the sizes that I measured would fit properly. And then I glued the two pages to the outside. I really love this ombre heart uh, with the pink for the outside. It's very pretty. Then I created a binding edge and glued that on. Again, remembering to keep things flat and smooth and being very careful to seal the edges, making sure that there were no corners that were going to lift up and tear off on me, you know, six months from now when I was using the book. I came back and added some paper to color up the inside and I had fun doing this. It was simple and decorated the book instantaneously with beautiful colors. And in the back, I added a little extra something by first laying down the measured piece of paper that I had chosen to put on the inside back cover and making sure that that was flat. I'm closing the book and opening it again just to make sure that I'm not on the seam and it would get uh, crushed when I used the book. I then cut a little pocket square for myself. I dampened it with a wet wipe so that it would be a little flexible and that would leave me some room to be able to slide things in and out easily. And there's the finished outside cover and inside panels. That was easy enough to do, including adding the little pocket Next, I chose from the Camellia Carnations a page that I decided I would cut out some fussy cutting so that I could add a little decor to the front. And I wasn't too picky about this. I just sliced off the sections of the paper that I wanted to work with. And once I got that into a size I could hold in my hands, I came back and fussy cut and I wasn't perfect about it. I just got the images out. There's a lot of pinks in this as well. So everything should blend in pretty easily. Using the Eyelet Hearts dies, I chose to take the larger of the pretty edged die and cut out a heart, which I then came back once it was cut out with that beautiful edge and with the all things are possible stamps I chose the 
with God all things are possible, the pretty butterfly, something that you could look at all year. I prepped my paper and stamped with Ursamark so that I could get it sticky to take the black embossing powder I had chosen to put on the stamp. I wanted to be able to really see it. And then, of course, took my tweezers and my gun and embossed it and somewhat placed it slightly off center because I'm going to come back and put the fussy cut papers with that cute little teapot and spoon and the pretty carnations across the bottom left and the other piece I put up in the right upper hand corner. I was really careful to make sure that any tiny edges of this were glued and I used a wet wipe to flatten them again being sure that I wouldn't have problems with the papers sliding off and getting torn. I used Word, I'm not sure if this is going to come out clear, to create a calendar and I just saved that onto my computer and when I was finished saving it I prepped to print it and ended up printing just one plain 8 by 10 paper so that I could see that it was the right size. I chose what papers I would like to create calendars with. There I am checking to see how it would fit onto the paper, seeing that the border that I wanted to show once I cut the paper into 8 by 10 sizes would actually fit the way I expected it to. And then I just cut all of the different papers that I had chosen for my 12 months into 8 by 10s and popped that into my printer. Being careful, of course, that depending on your printer, whichever way your paper is facing, the calendar will print on the side that you wanted it to. And so there it is. You can do this with anything that you would like to create on the computer. The papers go through my printers pretty easily and uh, I assume that you wouldn't have too much trouble printing on your own paper. So there are all the papers with their calendars on them. I must admit I did put one graphic 45 in for June because it was covered with roses and I wanted to include that for June. Any of the pages in the calendars where I wasn't pleased with the back side and didn't put a pocket on, I took another piece, cut it to the same size, glued it on three edges, and that led me to have a pocket big enough to maybe fold a, an 8x10 memo or something that I needed to keep so I have some larger pockets in the book. And as you can see, I stamped the months with Graphic 45 stamps. Now I'm going to go back and add some tabs so that I have sections to the rest of the papers. I left a few pages in between each of the calendars to make my weekly planners and stuff, but I needed sections for lists and recipes or whatever else I wanted. So I took one of the dies that came with the banners for the Young at Heart collection and I just cut out a banner and folded it, cut it in half, and now I'm gluing the tip together so that I can have at least a piece of it glued together and slip it over the edge of the page. Here I'm just checking to be sure it's going to end up where I want it to. And then I'm going to slip the two sides of the paper by opening that up where I did not glue right over the edge of the paper that I want it to sit on. I'm throwing some glue on there before I do so, making sure I cover both sides because they will be on both sides of the paper and then just pressing them down so that the little tab is on one side and the other side holding on to the edge of the paper. And I'm coming back and adding a little bit of glue to any spots that weren't glued down and there you can see I've added a tab. And then I'm just going to move a few pages more in the book and come back and do this again until I have all of the tabs that I actually wanted. What's really cool about these journals is that they're 
sort of universal because they're all heartfelt and they're all set up the same way with these lined pages and then a set of beautifully decorated pages. So I can add or subtract and having left one of the journals out, anytime I need a few extra pages in a section, I have something that matches to just throw them in and add to my sections or add to my daily planner pages in between my calendars. I chose to cut out one of the cutouts from the paper pads and put a little something on the back of the book. So there it is pretty much all decorated up. And now I'm going to go back into the calendar pages and put all my dates. This didn't take me very long. I like to write my dates in the upper right hand corner so I can just list things on the left. It feels a little bit more natural for me to do it that way. And that's it, it's pretty much set up. So here it is, it's not complete. It won't be complete until the end of December in 2018, right? Because I'm gonna be decorating and doing things and adding and switching the whole time. So here's the fussy cut little teacup and spoon with the carnations from the carnation paper and the embossed stamp inside the die cut heart with the lovely papers that you saw me putting together. When you open it up, here's a pocket, which I actually pleated this one just a little bit, and I have a, a piece of cut paper, and I needed this so that I could put some items up at the front that are important. Here are the calendar pages. I've already started a list of the things that I want to get done. It's just a running list. And here are the calendar pages with the dates in them. And so these are a little bit larger than the papers that I have in the middle from the journal, which I can do my weekly or daily or whatever it is I need to do on those pages and then flip to the next month. So I have all the months here. And further in, I have, after the months, these tabs, which I showed placing on the edges. There's five of them, and there's more pockets. I figured I would use this as uh, a great place to keep a Christmas list, right? So I can have my, my names on here, and when there's an idea that I have, I can keep that right in there for the whole year. So the tabs flip open to different sections. I will be decorating this and calling it my recipe section. So I'll, I don't know about you guys, but I've had a lot of health things that have brought me to a whole new way of cooking. I may even be putting up some videos or open another channel about that because I am uh, attempting to be gluten-free, to be completely organic, to be grass-fed, whatever I can do to keep my food pure. I have to make a lot of things that I used to just buy and I'm learning how to cook all over again. So for example, I have Noreen's Kitchen. Do, I hope you watch her channel. She's, she's, a, she's got so many recipes on there. Um, but she did do a gluten-free bread, which I tried because uh, most of her recipes are, are pretty good. They're pretty true blue. So I figured I would try hers even though she's not a gluten specialist. Uh, that if she said it was a decent gluten bread, I was going to give it a shot. So isn't it cute? I put it on the berry, um, not the berry, the bear paper that came out in November. And I'll be keeping the new recipes that I'm trying to get used to. But the cool thing is that once I have all these, I can actually pull them out and make a separate recipe book and, and use the journal pages so that they, I have all the different heartfelt creation papers still in my recipe book. So these will be different sections. Maybe I'll come back later in the year and show you what I did, um, running lists or something like the bullet lists. But why why can't they be beautiful, right? Why can't your, bu your bullet list be start, start off beautiful and then you could put die cuts and, oh, I just have so many ideas for this. And then at the back, I have another little pocket and I have, these were the pieces of paper that were left over. 
when I was cutting the bigger ones to make the calendars and I just used them to fold them in half and I have a whole bunch of Heartfelt Creations like little mini pads here, just little papers that if there is a project I'm working on I can take one of these out and I can use the the pad for or the page or whatever you would call this little mini book to keep track of what I need to purchase for it or things that I'm doing for it and then I can take that and pop it in one of the pockets that I've put up front further and we can add pockets and die cuts and stamps and sentiments and all kinds of things all year so when I have more ideas I'll be back but essentially that's it I have all my calendars and I have uh, a couple of the ones that um, I made into larger pockets on the sides which I showed you in the video when I was creating it and I've got all the dates in and that's it come January 1st I'm in a new planner and it's all heartfelt creations and it's all beautiful and I can do bullet journaling in here I can um, make my grocery lists in here and my menu planning in here and if I um, if I can I'll be back and show you more and the pages I can move back and forth they all match because they're from heartfelt Oh, very excited about this. So I hope you're thinking about what you're going to be starting your year off with. I really like the idea of the binder. The pages turn easily enough. I actually started off with three of the books in here and I'm down to two with one spare book that I can use to add and subtract papers. And I'm looking forward to using this this year. It's just great to be able to have heartfelt creations all over the place in in the book that I'm going to be looking at for the whole rest of the year. So there it is. I'm excited. Yes, it's going to be a bullet journal sometimes. Yes, it's going to be a planner. It's my calendar book. It's my ideas and project lists. It's beautiful. It's got little places to pull out, pocket, whatever I need. Okay, everybody, I hope you are all healthy and well and looking forward to spending some great family time. And uh, I'll be back. Hopefully this week I can make a few videos. We'll see how the internet is working. <laughs> Lately things have been funky. And to all of my subscribers and all of my followers and all of my friends on YouTube and all of my customers, a very Merry Christmas to all of you. Till next time, everybody, this is Kathy from Huckleberry Herbs and Art. God bless.